Hello everyone and welcome back for another video. If you are new here, my name is Courtney and my twin sister Ashley and I share this YouTube channel together. So if you guys couldn't tell, today's video I am showing you guys us putting in a kitchen island on a budget. We did it for so, so cheap. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited and I cannot wait to show you guys how it all turned out. Now, if you are wondering where we got it from, we got it from Lowe's. It's technically a kitchen sink cabinet area, but we're using it as an island. And we also got a piece of plywood, um, three quarter inch thick plywood. And here's the process of what we did. And yeah. So let's get into taking down this kitchen table so we can make room for that island to come in. I cannot wait to show you guys. I'm so, so, so excited. And also, it's not 100% finished or done or anything like that. I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks we can finally get it done. But more towards the end of the video, I will explain what we actually want to paint it and stuff like that. Because the kitchen cabinet is technically unfinished wood. So I can literally do whatever I want to this cabinet. So... And also, the top of the island as well isn't a permanent solution. It's just something to keep the wood protected. So, just wanted to quickly say that. So, let's get into getting this kitchen cleared out so we can get that island put in here. Okay, so now that we have the island in the kitchen, we're trying to put it in a spot to where none of the appliances will hit it. We have enough space around it and stuff like that. So I'm checking the dishwasher, the oven, the refrigerator, and around the other side. Obviously, there's going to be room there, but I didn't want it to be too tight when the chairs were pushed in. So I was just checking to make sure this is a good spot to put it. Now, later on down the line, we do want to put hidden, um, what do you call those, little wheels in the inside. So that way, when we do have a lot of people over, we can push this back towards the window and it won't be in the way or anything like that. So, And here, I'm showing you what it looks like. Like I said, it is unfinished. It has those two drawers, but we do want to add in some shelves in here. You're not going to see that in today's video. Like I said, it's not done or anything like that. But I got this bad boy on sale for $104.50 because this little back corner over here came detached, like the staples came out. So yeah, it was like $100 off just because of that right there. So I was like, heck yeah, put it in my cart, put it in my car, let's go. Because we've been wanting to do this for a very, very long time. We have very limited storage in this house. My house is on the smaller side. It's only a thousand square feet. So instead of pulling out our table every single night, we figured let's get an island that way I have more storage and we can all sit there and I don't have to worry about putting the table back every night. But here I'm showing you what we are using to make those two, um, the back and the side pieces touch together and they're no longer split or anything like that. So yeah, let's get into showing that and we're gonna go into bringing in the top of the island right after this. Alrighty, so this is the three quarter inch plywood that we're going in with. Now we got this also on sale. It was supposed to be, I'm pretty sure, $89.78, but we got it for $44.37 because the outsides that we weren't going to use that we're going to be chopping off was not looking too good. So, so far, this island only cost me around $148, so not too bad if you ask me. Now, the original price on the cabinets themselves was $209. I don't know if I said that or if anybody caught that, so... Yeah, so now Matt is going in and he's measuring out how much he needs to cut off on this side so that way we can get down to fitting it 
the way the chairs would be sitting and also so the bad spots were taking off as well and we're going to be cutting off the sides too to obviously make it fit down to the sides of the um island itself so the only only, only part that's going to be having an overhang is the back part where the chairs will be sitting under and you'll be eating at the rest is going to be basically flush with the um cabinets itself so let's get into measuring and cutting So you guys, please wear safety gear while doing this stuff. My husband is like a daredevil and messes around with stuff like that, but don't do it. Make sure you're wearing the proper stuff. And also, if you're wondering why we didn't do this outside, it was completely raining out there, so we couldn't do it. The wood would have gotten soaked and stuff like that. So that's why we're doing it indoors, okay? Safety squints, babe. Join I know. Safety squints. You have long eyelashes. You should be better than me. Oh, you have longer eyelashes than I do. Huh? So don't try this at home, kids. So this is what it looks like all cut down to the measurements that we want it to be. Like I said, the sides are flush to it. The front has, a, I think, maybe a two inch overhang. I can't remember if it was one or two. And then the back, I'm pretty sure was 12, 12, I'm pretty sure it was 12 inch overhang. Now this is just to protect the wood for now. I went to Dollar Tree and I picked up their liners for the shelves and it was this marble print and I really liked it. I thought it would look really good. Even though it does not match, this island doesn't match my kitchen whatsoever. I figured let's throw this on here. I've always wanted marble countertops. So let's see what it would look like. Now it did not come out perfect. It's not going to be perfect. I did go through four rolls and I like I said, I got it from Dollar Tree if you're wondering if you didn't hear me before. So let's get into sticking on this basically shelf liner on top of this um, countertop so we can preserve it, protect it. So that way we can figure out what we actually want to do with it. Well, technically I went through three. I wouldn't have had to go through four if I didn't accidentally get the other one all stuck together. So yeah, I just wanted to throw, throw that out there. It wasn't four. It was three technically. If you don't mess up, it's three. <laughs> anyways let's get into putting this bad boy on i'm using my cricut um like a smoothing tool and i'm putting a rag on it a clean rag over it and i'm using that so that way when i'm going to apply this i can get minimal bubbles and a nice smooth nice smooth like finish to it 
Um, now, I was reading the back of this right here, and it was saying I could use a, a hair dryer to smooth it all out and stuff like that. But like I said, I wasn't too worried about how it was coming out. It was mostly just to protect it. If it was something that was going to be more permanent, I would have been more um, like careful with it and went step by step with the directions on back it's saying you could puncture the holes that if you have any bubbles you can puncture them you know blow dry it to make it stick a lot more better and stuff like that but I wasn't too worried I just wanted to get it on to protect it and stuff like that and one more thing the top isn't like a hundred percent screwed onto the top of the cabinets it's uh like more towards the left side if you're standing like i am right now more screwed in on that side um than it is on the right and that's because we don't want to put too many holes in it because like i said a million times we are not sure 100 percent what we're going to do if we're even going to keep this piece stain it something like that or completely go with a, a stone or a butcher block or anything like that so you will see me moving it around a little bit to get the edges um, of this not vinyl but shelf liner wrapped around this tape um, that table sorry you guys wrapped around the countertop when I decided to change my mind well technically I wanted to do it like this in the first place but I totally forgot I was getting ahead of myself so I decided to push this uh, shelf liner down towards the other end and have the separate piece of wood that was exposed be a strip that goes the opposite way these ones are going so having that wood gap right there instead of it being right when you enter in you're seeing like the wood gap and the piece of shelf liner going the opposite way of these two it'll be on this end kind of like hidden if you know what i mean so i just wanted to qu quickly explain that's why i switched it over so that way you didn't see it. it wasn't the first thing you saw when you looked at the countertop so this is when i messed up right here it got all stuck together and i couldn't undo it so i opened up the fourth one and after after you see me apply this you will see that I have a lot of overhang towards me and that's the piece that I'm going to cut off and use at that end of the counter where it's bare wood and you know cut it up and use it that way so I'm not wasting any of the shelf liner on here so just want to quickly explain all of that to you guys.
Okay, so we're thinking of putting a ship lap around the bottom of this. I feel it would give it a little more of a home feel, cozy feel. Let me know what you think about that or if I should just go in and prime it and paint it a certain color. Um, and then the top, like I said earlier, we might want to go in mostly with a butcher block, but we're not 100% sold yet. And I also have other plans for this kitchen. So I kind of want to do either all white cabinets or the top only white and the bottom a different color, but nothing too bold. Like I don't want it to go too crazy here in the kitchen because it is on the smaller side and I don't want it to be like all these different colors and textures and stuff like that and make it feel too closed in and too busy all at once for your eyes to see anything. So let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you think about the shiplap at the bottom. Either leave it white or a certain color or just completely paint it one color. And if it would match the white cabinets and the lower cabinets white as well or a different color. So got a couple options there. Let me know what you think. Maybe you have different ideas than I do. I would love to hear them. I'm not too shy about that. So go in, give me your comments. Let me know what you think. Let's finish putting on this shelf liner to protect this countertop. Alrighty, you guys so here's the end result it's not perfect you can kind of see the seams and stuff like that only if you're up close and if you if I point it out but other than that it looks great right but let me know what you think about some of the options that I threw out here of how to actually finish this thing up again we are going to put shelves in there to also finish it out so I can get rid of another stand that I have in my kitchen just to make it feel a little more open I hope you guys enjoyed this video and how budget friendly it was and hopefully maybe it gives you some ideas of what you could do for your kitchen as well if you are limited on storage and space. But I will catch you guys next Saturday. Bye.